this lesson we will lay the foundation of Expenses Tracker application. We will design models and write basic unit tests. Let's start. Here I have created a very basic skeleton of a Django project. This project contains one single app and I already added core app to the installed apps. Also notice that I created settings folder where I have placed three settings files base, dev and test. It is a very good practice to have a base settings module from which other modules will import settings, like I did here for dev.py. I did not create any application specific models yet. However, it is a good practice that when you start a new Django project to always define your application specific user model, and which means basically that you define a model called user which will inherit from abstract user. After you have defined user model this way, you need to add it in your settings file, like I did here. With these preparations ready, we are all set to start our model design. The heart of expenses tracker is a view like this, which is a list of monthly expenses. An expense is basically an amount of money which you spend on something. In this example here, I spent $37 on my electricity bill on this date. Let's have a closer look at one of these rows so that we can understand the model design of our Django project. Each of these rows will be an instance of a model called XP transaction. I call this model XP transaction so that we won't confuse it with database transaction. Besides obvious fields like date, amount and description, there are three very important fields which we will need to add. One of them is user. This is easy to understand because every transaction is per user. Or put it other way, every transaction belongs to a specific user. The less obvious fields are these two, SRC and DST, which stand for source account and destination account. When I paid my electricity bill, money flowed, so to speak, from my bank account into groceries account. So my bank account will have $37 less and my groceries account will have $37 more. Accountants use terms like credit and debit for these things. But we are software developers and for us terms like source and destination make more sense. Each account will have associated an amount of money, a name and a description. So we will need to add these three fields for XP account model. Again, I use XP account name for the model so that we will avoid confusion with user account. Now, if there are $320 in groceries account, it means that you spent $320. If you have $1,000 in bank account, it means that you own that amount of money. If there are $480 in consulting services account, it means that you earned that amount of money. In other words, there are three types of accounts. Expense, something which you spend money for, asset, something that you own or that belongs to you at this very moment, and lastly, income type of account, like salary or consulting services, something which brings money to you. So we will need to take care to include account type field on XP account model. Similar to XP transaction, XP accounts are per user, or in other words, an XP account belongs to a specific user. So we will need to include user field on XP account model as well. And now that we clarified the basic model architecture, let's write some code. So here I'm in models py and I will start by adding XP account model. And first I will add a field called name. This will be a character field with maximum length of 64 characters. I will add a description field as well. As we learned in theory part, XP account belongs to a user, so I will add a user field as a foreign key to this user model. An XP account has an amount of money associated, so I will add a field called amount. And now we arrived at a very very important moment. So the question is, what type of field should I use for amount? To simplify things. At this moment I will discard the idea of currency. So amount will be basically a number. But there are at least three possibilities. One is integer, second one is float and third one is decimal. 
maybe integer is not the right choice because we will need to add two integer fields one for dollars and another one for cents the last two candidates are float and decimal and the correct answer is decimal field before we move on let's understand the reason why when working with numbers that represent money like in our case the amount field decimal is the right choice and floats will lead you into disaster when working with numbers which represent money we would expect that all these statements will be true it may surprise you but this equality may not always be true for floats numbers if you open now python interpreter and try to check if 2.00 plus 3.00 represented as floats equal to 5.00 again as float obviously that equality will be true the problem is way more subtle than that the thing is that during some operations on floating numbers the result might be a very very close approximation of 2 because of formatting you will see the result actually as 2.00 when in reality that floating number will be represented as 2.00001 and when you add a number which is a very close approximate of 2 but not 2 plus 3 obviously it will not be equal to exactly 5 when working with decimals we won't have this sort of surprises floating numbers are more suitable for more advanced math when you need square roots or when you need a very precise approximation of irrational numbers like p for accounting software like xp tracker where we mostly work with simple plus and minus operations decimal numbers are way better choice we don't want our groceries total to look like this right notice that decimal field takes two arguments one is max digits and second is decimal places decimal places is the number of digits we will use for cents max digits is well total number of digits including decimal places and last field that i will add will be account type as we learned in theory there are three account types expense asset and income Let me now define these three constants. And now we are ready to move on and define XP transaction model. First field that I will add will be date. In order to avoid confusion with Python's date module, I will name this field created at. A description, which will be a text field, an amount which as we learned again in theory will be a decimal field a source field which will be a foreign key to xp account a destination account which again will be a foreign key to the same xp account model and finally a user field which will be a foreign key to the user model and now i will run make migrations and finally manage migrate Before we move on to unit testing, I want to make a short announcement. On DjangoLessons.com, I included a new pro screencast. This screencast is about code style. Following correct guidelines when writing code is an essential part of becoming an efficient developer. It takes only a couple of minutes to learn them, but benefits last for an entire career. On DjangoLessons.com, there are many interesting pro screencasts, which I'm sure you don't want to miss. XP Tracker application will keep track of personal expenses. At the very least, we should be able to move money from one account into another. In other words, we should be able to perform a transaction. In this basic test, I will create two accounts. Then I will perform a transaction. And finally, I will check if accounts were updated correctly. Let's do that. First thing, I will import models. I will create first account called Groceries. Let me create a user now. At this point we should have one XP account instance available. Let's double check that. Similar way I will create a bank account, which will have an amount of $1000 in it. To simplify things I will discard the idea of currency. Let's double check that again. Just for fun, let's run one-time tests. Notice that I change my Django settings module to XP Tracker settings tests. Okay, great, it ran perfectly. To perform a transaction, I will call a function called perform transaction, which will look something like this. 
As we learned in theory part, a transaction has a source account. In this unit test, source account is bank account and destination is groceries account. Let amount be 37.29, just a random value. And description, this function is not defined yet. I just wrote here the way I want it to look like. What I'll do now, I'll add a basic skeleton for this function. I'll place it in a module which I'll call utils and that utils module will be in core app. So let me first add utils module and here I placed an empty definition of perform transaction. Now let me import this perform transaction in our unit test. Before this transaction bank account has $1000 and groceries has zero and after performing this transaction I expect that amount to be different. So let me add assertions for that. So before performing this transaction in groceries account there will be zero dollars and in bank account there will be 1000. And after this transaction I would expect groceries to have this amount. And bank account should have 1000 minus this value, which is 962.71. And now if I'll run test, obviously they will fail because this function does not do anything. But let me run it anyway, just to see that. What is left now to do is to add definition for this function. Let's do that. And definition of perform transaction function is actually pretty simple. So first thing, it will create an XP transaction instance. But let me first import this model. The user for XP transaction instance should be the same user as for source account and destination account. We'll perform validation a little bit later. So at this moment, it will suffice just to add SRC user. And created at field will be current date. And let me import date. And finally, this amount should be deducted from source account and added to destination account. And now I can run test to see if it performs the way I expected. Fantastic. Perform transaction function though has a very subtle problem. But the exact shortcoming of this function and how to improve it we will learn in next lesson. Also in next lesson we will include basic expert tracker application workflows. And we will start writing views. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thanks for watching.